You're listening to FFOP Radio. Reach the audience. Welcome to the show. My name's Dave, a.k.a. Crazy Dervis of Crazy Dervis's Discount Carpets, and this is a fistful of podcasts Carpets. from FFOPRadio.com. Back for another great week. Let me introduce you, as usual, to my co-hosts, all the way from the Reno Sparks area, and up first, we have one, Mr. Andy Andrew A-Dog B-Dog Virgin. <laughs> Mr. Crazy Dervis, Mr. Crazy Dervis. One of our employees just got crushed. Half of, it, half of him got crushed underneath the carpets. You know, get the forklift. But it, l- luckily, it was this his left side, so now he's all right. Oh, God damn it! We will need to pay for disability. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's only half. just... <laughs> of course, the man pointing out we'll only have to pay half was me. But the man who said we'll have to pay disability was Adam J. Hubbard Esquire. How do you take care of car pets? Car pets? Like, do you run the AC all the time? Yeah, you gotta run the AC and uh, put it. Put that little sign in the window that says, "My dog loves it in here. Please don't break my windows." Yeah, I am unhappy with how this is going. I just want to be <laughs> full and open and honest with you guys. I think this is going awfully. Uh, in studio, of course, we got Chris over there on the couch. But my wife is like, "Yo, this sound machine is very slow." <laughs> so. <laughs> Guys, welcome to the show. Adam and Andy back at it again, as usual. So uh, let's get right into it, guys. First of all, the smell of fish. What's up with it? It's awful, right? It is. And fish, I don't care what people say. Fish tastes like it smells. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. Why is it that there's not there? You know, we have so many unwritten rules in our uh, societal code book, if you will. Why is it that nobody has the balls to stand up and say, no fish in common areas at work, right? Hmm. One, t- one time Adam bought fried fish from the A&W next to us, and I had to burn my car. <laughs> <laughs> Just like a fill full of gas and toss a match as you walk yep. away in slow motion? And to claim the insurance on it. You have to. Like, that's why I don't, you know, be, be what you will and do what you want to do. If you live by the ocean, eat as much fish as you want. But it is just the worst thing Ever, I think. Did you recently have fish in your uh, in your common area? <clears throat> no, but sometimes it does happen. The one thing that happens in my common area more often than not is that in the sink that does not have a garbage disposal <clears throat> often is left copious amounts of food that would require said disposal for the disposal of it. And uh. <clears throat> I don't understand how... Because when you look down at the sink... It's not one of those garbage disposal holes with the rubber lips. Right. It's, it's got these... like the grate, but the grate with yeah. the holes that are big enough for shit to pass through. No, it doesn't, though. The, you, the, the people leaving the things there must be seeing the beans, the tomatoes, the onions, <laughs> the, all the delicious food that they tried to get rid of. Now, delicious. waterlogged and washed of every ounce of, um, you know, whatever it once was. Now just the Nutrition ghost of flavor. food. Yeah, now just the ghost of food floating in the sink and now sinking to the bottom and and getting sucked into one of those holes. You're making then a conscious decision as the employee that works with me to go like, yep, fuck it, and walking away. It's good enough for me. Yeah, because apparently that's the thing you do in common areas is like you just say, oh, it'll be somebody else's problem. David, when I worked at Target, I would watch people drop like in t- entire meatballs on the floor in the common area and just like kind of stare at them and then get well, up and go media. back to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Italian Joe. Hey, well, my, I my meatball. My meatball, but I have to go a cashier. Yeah. And then he would twirl his mustache. I remember that guy. I remember hearing <laughs> stories about that guy. He reminded me of Mario. Full disclosure. <clears throat> well, he had to wear red. That's yeah. True. Well, because he was That's Mario, not, not Luigi. He'd have to work at. Green store. Green Sprouts. store. Low sprouts, <laughs> Whole Foods. <laughs> yeah, the the sprouts and the target of the Mario and Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I common areas are a dicey situation, man. I the one I have like isn't necessarily disgusting, but it's used for literally everything. Like the owners will do uh, interviews and stuff in there, so I'm always just like 
since, you know, thank God I don't care. I'm completely disengaged and checked out. I'll walk right in and say hello to everybody involved. But it's still, it's awkward for them, I imagine, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to have this strange lad walking through their meeting. But don't have your meeting where my sodas are. Like, yeah, I've right. got LaCroix, and you are between are me and it. Meeting rooms? Yeah. Well, no. it, it's, <laughs> it's the same. No, like, the, my place is so small, there's no place to go but the one room that we have. But mm. it just happens to have the refrigerator in it. Uh, see, the, the break room I use at work is a little bit off the beaten path. Like, there's a couple <laughs> vending machines in it, but there's only, like, two tables. So it's only ever, like, me and maybe somebody else. Yeah. But, They've just made the decision recently, like, I don't know who asked for it. Somebody was clamoring for a, a microwave in that small break room that nobody Ooh. used. Hmm. So now I get people that wander through and warm up their fish and stuff. Oh, see, here's, oh my god! <laughs> here's what I do as a, as a nice substitute teacher. When the lunch bell rings, I say, bitches leave, and then I take out my lunch. And he's not asked back to a lot of places. <laughs> <laughs> but my, my the worst thing is... Sometimes I'll cook stuff ahead, like, oh, I'm going to have some, like, some pork chop and rice for my, for my entree. You get there, you don't, if you haven't been to a school before, you don't know if that teacher has their own fridge and microwave. Yeah. So, okay, so let me ask you this about leftovers. Krista is very divisive, and I am so, sort of laissez-faire about leftovers and how they are eaten. I, okay. eight times out of ten, because of sheer, leave them cold. Burgers, no. dogs, whatever. Pizza doesn't matter. Ugh. Do you Pizza's guys find the other two? You are a monster. It, it depends on what it is. He eats everything cold. He does not. He will not heat it up. He ate enchiladas cold. I love it. See, that's that's what uh, Larson was saying the other day, and like it just. Oh, no. certain, I suppose it depends on how you sell it, but it kind of just feels lazy to me. Like just eating things cold like that. Yes. Right, but but lazy to who? And gross. Like who? To who me, the one am... that I just the thing I just said. <laughs> right, but who am I? <clears throat> why am I impressing you with my cold leftovers? You know what I mean? You're not impressing me. <laughs> yeah, you, you need to do better. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not worried about it because I will pull two cold ass burger patties out of the fridge and eat them straight out of that thing, and I'll throw a bunch of mustard on them, and it's great. Mm -mm. It, I think it, the burgers are okay. I think I prefer them warm, but I think they're okay cold. I, Everything I works know. cold. I'm telling you. You 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 are telling me uh, how dare you, and you are striking this sin against me Hot simply chocolate. because of um, preconceived notions. Taste something cold, you'd be like, eh, he's nailing it again. And Thanks, he just gave you one. Which one? Can't have hot chocolate cold. That'd be just chocolate milk. <clears throat> yeah. So I guess if you if the thing that you're eating or drinking or experiencing <laughs> depends on the temperature so definitely that it's in the name all bets are off all right uh your hot chocolate you eat your chicken cold david I, that's toddies. not good yeah i love eating chicken cold mm, I, but i obviously I, I suppose, cook it first i've known people that love to get like i lived with a guy who would get like a bucket of kfc and then eat out of it throughout the week that's horrifying. And you just pull like that's, a drumstick out of there and no, like, no 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 that's disgusting your your friend is a pig person what i'm talking about is <laughs> expertly crafted meals by myself or my wife that are now hermetically you just said sealed in Tupperware. Hamburger patties doused in mustard. Oh, what a delicacy. <laughs> yeah, but when I cooked them, all the care in the world and all my favorite spices went into them just because I'm cold and I'm eating them apparently yeah. shamefully like an ogre. Covered and now in... that he's leftovers, he doesn't give a shit. Well, the what... care's already gone in. There's there's lingering care. <laughs> yeah, is what, they what, would say. what do I need? Like, do, will heat somehow oh, make impressing. it? What does the heat do for you? It, it adds like, that home cooked meal. Part I like hot. It makes I it like a hot meal. food. Yeah, so you want to feel good about yourself. I feel fine. I'll eat the cold <laughs> food. I don't need something to remind me I'm a good person or that this is my house. I, no, it's not a good person thing. I'm not saying that you're. Oh my god, put David in jail because he's eating the cold burger patties doused in mustard. His his favorite whole foods mustard. You have to. Oh my yeah. God. Oh my god. Three sixty five mustard. Let's talk about that for just a hot second. I don't know if I've talked about it with you guys yet, but. <laughs> It is so heavy with the apple cider vinegar. I fucking I would love to drink it if it were socially uh, I, acceptable. David, I have thought because of your numerous and uncountable posts about the 365 mustard, <laughs> I have thought about just stopping into Whole Foods and be like, "Mustard, please." <laughs> I'm telling you, you'll do it. You'll never look back. I don't even care for mustard, and I'm interested. <laughs> it's good. I, I tried it yesterday, and it was pretty good. But okay. I'm not a huge mustard person, but it does taste distinctly different than the other yellow mustard. It's it's a get. beautiful experience if you'll allow yourself, because with most yellow mustards, you get uh, white vinegar, your regs ass, boring, boring, boring. 
what they do at Whole Foods, <clears throat> it can't be undersold. What they do is they take a nice apple cider vinegar with the live cultures. They add the nice mustard seed and then the turmeric and a several other things that bring mm. it from a singular experience that you're adding to a dog or whatever to just be like, man, time to mask this dog becomes a symphony in itself. And when you put it on a kosher, like uncured, all grass fed c- dog, it's like, can, do you wrap your dogs in like lettuce or something? How do you do this? So typically if I have the energy, yes, the lettuce Rinse, butter, lettuce. repeat, dry, great. Okay. Lazy kicks in. I double up on the protein and wrap them in uh, slices of mozzarella cheese. Mm-hmm. Mamma mia. Delicious. Yes. But, no, that sounds great. That uh, I was just talking about hot dogs the other day because I have a butcher shop. We have, a, we have a, like a dedicated hot dog shop here, and we have a butcher shop, and each of them sell hot dogs. And every like <sighs> I'll get hot dogs at the grocery store. I'm like, this is shit. Right. I'll get hot dogs from those places. Like, oh, my God. Give me three of those. What is it? There's something about – and like – Hot dogs are like the cheapest food in the world. And that was what they were designed for. Somebody was like, you know what? Let's use all the trimmings and this and that and make food for people. Who are under the anus. The- yeah. But now it's like an artisanal thing where you're using the actual choice bits of stuff. Yeah. And where, whereas before the bar S's of our childhood are now the whatever's there's so many niche ones. It's At like a, point- uh, at what point does your hot dog become a sausage then? Well, hot dogs technically are sausages. <laughs> it's almost like how all squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. You might want to sit down, Andy. I am sitting down. Stand up He's, first. Yeah. All, these, all this gasping is up. getting to your head. Now sit down. Oh, shit. All the, you're, now you're just getting Andy to do calisthenics. Go lay down. <laughs> <laughs> Go lay down. It was a trick. Butcher Box makes really good hot dogs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are you guys on the Butcher Box? We are. We are on the We did it for forever, and then I canceled it because we weren't using the shit, and then I started cooking from home more, so I'm thinking about it again. Yeah, I we're exclusive eaters at home almost. So, yeah, like it's, it's a layup. The hot dogs are fucking fantastic. Like, I, I'm <clears throat> completely, totally fine with sharing everything I have with everybody. However, the caveat to that is I loathe sharing butcher boxes hot dogs even with my own wife <laughs> you know what Covered i mean some like gollum when i watch her eat them it makes me upset that i'm not getting to eat the one that she's eating even if i'm not hungry that's how good these hot dogs are i'm not sponsored by butcher box they're just good was, hot dogs i was about to make a sponsor joke thanks <laughs> oh yeah here i'm if if you want to sponsor me with some dogs I'm here, Butcher Box. No, no we want money, Butcher Box, not just dogs. No, 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 I'll take the dogs. They, they, Maybe some bacon. They got some pe- good bacon People too. think money is important. I think dogs are important. <laughs> Send me the dogs. That's uh, you're, 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 you, you get money, mm-hmm. and they'll also, like, you can buy the box, but then you'll have extra money. <laughs> he's just going to use the money to buy dogs. I'm anyway. just going to use yeah, the money for more dogs. Yeah. There are other bundles. You just add bundles on. No, not even that. Dogs. Just say, hey, guess what? I will talk about your dogs as long as dogs show up on my front porch. Dog talk 24-7. Hey, welcome back. This is Dervis's dog talk. Welcome to the dog pound. I'm Dervis the dog. <laughs> they were talking to Chicago. Do you like them? I love them. <laughs> Fucking dogs. <laughs> this is the junkyard dog. Fried potatoes in this bitch. Oh, look, we got Dog the Bounty Hunter. What's up with the racism, chief? N word, N word. Oh shit! <laughs> oh no! That leaves my sponsor. That's the dog I won't have. Uh, dog the bounty hunter's ruined everything. Yeah, butcher box hot dogs always welcome. Dog the so bounty hunter, the not bounty. in this house. What are we talking about? <laughs> uh, cold by cold left mustard. Left yeah, by cold left. What about macaroni and cheese? I, if that's your thing, I, I don't eat that stuff. Here's the deal: homemade. Yes, I can't stomach a leftover Kraft or Velveeta. Just. It, listen, you it make do, it, it with doesn't... love, you can eat it cold. <laughs> you make it with haste, even if you warm it up again, it's going to taste like ass. Make it with haste, it goes to waste. Mm. Booyah, that's mm-hmm. a nice one, Andy. Mm-hmm. That's very zen of you. Mm-hmm. I feel like you stole that from somewhere. I don't Probably think did. I did. <laughs> Everyone well, believes you stole it. He'll find <laughs> out, because I stole <laughs> Dervis from Turvis, apparently, what? I think. Oh, My right, mug. water bottle. No, yeah, my water bottle, Tervis. So I, I have to, I cannot say that that was a Dervis that original. That could just be part of, yeah, part of it. But who knows? We all have a Dervis inside. May, yeah, everybody's got a little Dervis in them. It's ready to steal IPs. 
<laughs> yeah, that's the part of you that wants to steal people's ideas, but forget it and say it was yours. <laughs> so he's not that's he's not a dervis working. Yeah, the the dervis is not a malicious demon. He's a, he's a trickster. He says, "Hey, yeah, guess he's, what? He's mischievous, honey. Your little dervis is showing." Yeah, yeah. He, dervis says, "Guess what? You just stole the concept for Ghostbusters, but you totally forgot." <laughs> and then someone says, "Isn't that the Ghostbusters?" And you go, "Dervis, dervis." Hey, he's my, like a little stinker. He's a part of me, just like Butt Chuggington is. All of my characters live in me. <laughs> oh God, I, I none of us. I hope none of us has a Butt Chuggington. Oh, in he's us. in there somewhere. Everybody has a little Butt Chuggington waiting to break free, <laughs> waiting to bust out of that butt, <laughs> waiting for some plastic tubing in a funnel, growing yeah. stronger, trying to stretch the bars open, it's trying you to know, stretch the anus open. <laughs> everyone can be anything. We, it, all it takes is Cthulhu-like proportion. Uh, settings where the stars are right. I think mm-hmm. anyone under the right circumstances, when presented with a funnel attached to uh, a tube and the prospect of getting even more wasted because you're not going to do it sober, anyone can be a butt chuggington. Butt stuff. <laughs> <laughs> You'll make the jump. I think we lost you. Unless you're just no, not. we're here. Okay, right here. We're just not right. laughing at your jokes. <laughs> well, I mean, you can know that to laugh, but this is a show that you can react to and say you don't it like in. it. Yeah, we, we, I, I was thinking very hard. It's like the stars align. Yeah. I too can. There's it's it's like a combination think. lock. <laughs> There's nothing to think about. I'm just postulating that everyone in their own little way is their own butt chuggington and can be for the simple and easy cost of nine ninety nine. Oh, get David's book. You too. Clever girl. I, I, I have butt chugged and so can you. <laughs> yeah. But it, it doesn't talk about butt chugging at all. It, it talks about his his determination to get into Total Wine hmm. and get as much as he can without getting caught. Because that's step one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a 30 step program. I, it, it's it's 30 many, different books. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's a step a day and a book a day. So if you can cram 300 pages in a single day in less than a year, you'll be through the whole program. And it's ten dollars per book per month per time you open the book because there's actually like a credit card type thing. You have to slide yeah, yeah, yeah. your it's thing. Like a credit card lock. Yeah. Wouldn't that be not for nothing? That's a million dollar idea right there. A credit card lock for your book. Like, hey, <sighs> self help books free of charge. The knowledge oh, no. inside. Swish. So th- think of it like. <laughs> okay, David, it's the book rental service, right? Yeah, the library essentially. Yeah. Except that I'm going to charge you five bucks to rent my book every time you open it, but it'll only cost you five bucks if you read it all at once. Or you just leave it open. Right, or you just don't close <laughs> no, it. No, it, it auto-closes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Function. All right, so, so there's like a... Um, yeah, so like there's a fail-safe, like a maybe a little pneumatic device that'll start to close, but if it feels pressure, it'll open back up. Yeah. I mean, just keep if, it open and put some rocks on it. Yeah, side. why not a chopstick? I don't know. I'm, Give me back my book not, then. You guys are gaming the system. <laughs> I know. That's the thing. Every system will be game, so you have to think of the game before you release it so you're not fucked by not knowing what the game is. I mean, if I was writing a bunch of books, I'd feel cheated that I wasn't getting money for like every single word that I wrote. Well, yeah, That's totally. The way but Ryan Hubbard did it. All, yeah, well, he was penny a word and he got paid, so he didn't give a fuck if you read it or not. Uh, but what we have to do is try and find a way, because all information everywhere is 100% free, as long as you're willing to put in the time and energy to get it. How can we bilk people who don't want to do that? Uh, I believe his name is Tony Robbins. Right. So, <laughs> But he's already doing a Tony Robbins type thing. What can we do to tailor giving away free things for money? You know what I mean? What mm-hmm. could be our angle? What are we going to say that, hey... This is what we got. It's free out there, so we need a skill or something. Okay, we, we, we need to take we need to take a inventory of the skills that we have. Okay, so what do we got? Adam, what do you got for me? Navigational skills. All right. But only by sea or by land as well? Mostly by sea, two if by land. Okay. Mm, I, I can navigate by land. Wait. <laughs> mostly by sea, but two if by land. <laughs> Still more than one. I like that. All right, so we got navigation from Adam, mostly on the water. Andy, what do you got? Uh, I can teach your children. He can teach how a, to math. Can you teach well, adults? Uh, adults are just big children, right? That's that's very true. But we need something that is like maybe not necessarily a skill that you have to be in person too. Like we can put it in a book or on a video or whatever. Put it in a book. Put it in a book. Uh, I can make word searches. 
No, that's, that's, that's still that's you're making a product. What I'm saying is like doing because like there's nothing keeping you from learning any skill. Like you can say, oh, I need a teacher, but there are t- people doing it for free on the internet right now. So it, we live in a time where if you say I want to do blank, you definitely can't do blank. Yeah, if you're really set out to find it. But people are still offering these experiences and or pathways to certain things for money. And there's a clientele out there because some people will not take anything serious unless they have money invested. He's right. Some people don't take things seriously when they have money invested. Right. But we don't care about them. We already have their money. What I'm talking about is we need to find something to get people to give us money for something they can get for free literally anywhere else. How to take care of plants, which is literally free anywhere. <sighs> that, yeah, but stay on brand is what I'm uh, also the, the secondary thing of this is the on brand on brand for FFOP radio. I'm going to teach yeah. you how to interrupt real good, how to derail any subject, uh, the, the skill of interruption. Okay. Yo, oh, you you probably could put out like a six week course on button pushing, and I've got, I I think I found a button for you, and if you're willing to let me oh, push yeah. it, I will. Hey, David mentioned it on the chat the other day. I don't know if you saw that. I I was probably teaching children. I, I was super curious. Yeah, if you want, if you want, I'll push it. Go but, go ahead. But it's out of love, Andy. I'm not doing it to be mean. <laughs> but Andy is a Republican. What the fuck? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and he's a Republican because not in um, ideals. I Let me s- stress that. Not an ideal or in thought, but in action. Because when Andy starts getting um, upset, he does a Republican thing and goes, well, okay, you're right and I'm wrong and diddly dee. <laughs> so he turns into Donald Trump, even though his intentions are Ooh. pure. When you say, Andy, here's the thing. And you go, okay, I'm checking out. Now's the time to throw up my hands and make a big scene. The but we all turning. do it. I can see them. Yeah, but that's the thing. See, that's his button. And I'm not pushing out of out of anger, Andy. I'm not doing it to make oh. you pissed off. Andy, don't don't hover oh, over that disconnect button. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you you obviously can see things about me because you push him all the fucking time. <laughs> you love that doing fair. that shit. Do and it. I Yeah, like be honest, be real. <laughs> well, we have to accept. I push your buttons, you push mine. We push Adams together. Everybody loves pushing each other's hey, buttons. Was, Krista gets her button pushed. You were busy working the other day. David was really after everyone the other day. <laughs> like I was in the I was in the sadness hole with the with the with the uh, upset children. The sadness hole. Huh? The, I they have a sadness hole that. for upset children. Yeah, it's like the box. So I, I I said to Weird. myself, I need a I need a job for the day. So I I got on the. Well, the, the, day, the day before, I said, I'm going to get on here and get a job that's close to me. Luckily, yeah. there's a high school right next to me, and they had a job. All right. I didn't know what it was for. It said, Edgenuity. Sadness corner. Edgenuity. Edgenuity. Okay. Mm. So I showed up. Uh-huh. Counselor's assistant. And <laughs> was sent to a room by the ROTC rooms. I don't know why it's way back there. That was full of computers, and then when I looked at the lesson plans, I said, oh, no. It's So, David, keep in mind, it's less than seven days before the end of the semester and graduation uh-huh. at this high school. Yeah. This class is where they send all the sad kids that aren't going to graduate mm. Oh, so, so they that they can, do every- extra, oh. they can do extra oh. assignments to try to bring their grades up. Except I'm looking at these kids' grades, 23%, like, no 17%. Yeah. And every assignment they do is only raising it by, like, 0.2%. Woof. Yeah, well, the life threw you a curveball, Andy. Like, Well, eventually, eventually I found a copy, a moldy, torn-up copy of The <laughs> Hobbit that I read for the rest of the day. You really had well, an opportunity to turn those kids' lives around. No, they, I, wasn't allowed to, I wasn't allowed to teach the kids the subjects. <laughs> yeah, the, you, were, you were handed a plate of shit, You're and you did what you could with yeah. it. Yeah, like, that, that's the thing. Like, do you, when under you have to work within certain parameters. Like I, under, you know, everybody likes to think that I live by my own rules, and and I'm three sheets to the wind all the time. But I realize that laws still apply. I want to keep my job, and I still want to be a part of society. I'm not ready to check out fully yet. So you have to acknowledge that in yourself, especially when they stick you in a room where they say, "Okay, here's a bunch of people who are definitely dead ends." So do not even <laughs> think. Of reaching out your hand in compassion, just find a moldy old book. It was it was just, it was just set, like they'd come in and some of them work, would work really hard and then like their heads would hit the desks because they know they have such little time left. Yeah, and 
It has to. I mean, it's a Sisyphusian task, but where are they going to be warehoused if they aren't trying to do some Hail Mary at the last literal seconds of the game? Other books available were math books from 1977. Ooh. So you probably had basic uh, information in there. Teach that old man. Two volumes of the sixth book of the Chronicles of Narnia. <laughs> the sixth? I, 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 if they had had the first one, I would have probably read some C.S. Lewis, but no. The sixth one have Jesus? I don't. It, they, they all, all have Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> huh. But I'm, well, I'm looking through, like, they, they had a lot of textbooks and everyone I opened was older than me. Hmm. <laughs> Isn't that fun, though? You get to see, like, what they were doing in the 70s. One of the math books looked like, it was the 1977 one. The, the cover of the book, it was like, math is fun for the 70s. It was, <laughs> the cover was denim jeans. With, oh. and the, like, with a pocket that had, like, a calculator in it. Oh, oh, shit. Yeah. And it was textured. I remember all of the textbooks were a wild thing because you needed them and you hated them. And you ended up putting a paper bag over them uh -huh. in the end anyway. Yeah, I was just thinking yeah. about that. Do they still do that? Oh, guaranteed. Uh, guaranteed. Well, not those ones. I, I, oh, maybe, you know, you, I, I said guarantee thinking that paper bags still exist. Excellent. I've, I've, David, I've been in a lot of classrooms and they just have the textbooks in there. I've never seen them be sent home Covered. with the kids. Huh. Well, yeah, I, not even for like, cause I got textbooks in junior high and high school, but yeah. if they're saying, Hey, fuck it. Well, yeah, maybe like, they send them home with the laptop. Right. Things are changing. This is the thing. All this is nothing but uh, a long fart noise. Cause in three <laughs> seconds, it's all irrelevant and obsolete anyway. Oh, you want to talk about angry? My university has decided <laughs> students. We've teamed with Apple uh -oh. to give you uh -oh. iPad Airs. I'm like, I get an iPad Airs? Like, no. Freshmen <laughs> do. Ooh. Everybody else can fuck themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Only freshmen? Only freshmen and their free iPad Airs with no strings attached. Only the newbies will be given good opportunities. Well, yeah, well, but that's the thing. Apple is generous, but only to a certain point. I mean, they're interested in education, but only if you're just now starting. If you're already on the path to improving yourself, you can fuck yourself. Apple <laughs> says, thanks for starting right now. I, but I, 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 could, I could, you know, I already have an iPad, but an, an extra iPad just in the house. Right, but now, but now you're just that angry, covetous dude who wants more of a thing he doesn't need. Look, those kids don't deserve anything. I'm old. <laughs> right. Whoa. Yeah, great. <laughs> Society's wrong and you're right. Thanks, Sandy. I want my free iPad, too. I, I want an iPad and a ramp into the building. Yeah. <laughs> so for my sweet longboard to do an ollie. <laughs> yeah, for, for my longboard so I can just oh, longboard directly yeah. into a glass window. Yeah. <laughs> you oh see God. Andy? He rolls up on his longboard. He does a sweet kickflip while doing some <laughs> sweet surfing on his iPad Air. And he's like, yeah, I deserve all of this. And he slides right into his class. I watched the Look, guy society eat shit me. today. I know. I went um, <laughs> for a drive with Elliot this evening. And mm. I was at a red light. And a dude came to cross the street with like it, was, it looked like a longboard it was really long but it was motorized or whatever however they oh, do we that have a guy and near here that does, like that has one of those crazy. but the engine's always breaking yeah well he ate shit so i don't know if his engine broke <laughs> in the middle of the road and he fell we, forward on his face I, but it was hilarious it's been a strange happening because we've been seeing a lot of people eat a lot of shit recently yeah like it started <laughs> when just a guy crossed on the road ate shit just minding his own business walking needs you please boom eat shit broke his Banana phone peel. to a million pieces mm. yeah it, like, so many stories of people fall into the... Is gravity changing? Is something happening? Did I miss an update? It sounds like Maybe. an Arizona thing. Yeah. It's it's Maybe. all those uh, vortexes in Sedona are leaking. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they oh, could be leaking. Yeah. We were nowhere near Sedona. <laughs> they're, well, they're, they're, they're leaking <laughs> far and wide. Yeah, they're leaking like crazy. They're just pulling these old bastards down to the ground as hard as gravity will let them. Yeah. Well, I assume it's 200 degrees there, so the old man probably just le lost all will to live. Oh, Peshaw, it's barely half that. Yeah, I mean, at what temperature does the aluminum frame on that start to warp? You know, I often think about that. Like, when you're engineering stuff to sell to the public at large, why doesn't anyone think of Arizona? <laughs> why doesn't anyone think, like, because when you buy something and they say, hey, or you watch a YouTube channel of Better Homes and Gardens or whatever, and they say, stretch this mesh over the backyard, it'll provide shade for generations. Your children's children will thank you. Where if I do the same thing with the same product here, I'm lucky if it lasts two summers before it is literally nothing but burnt straw. Before it's, before it's in flames. <laughs> so Raining down on you and your children. Yeah. 
it's and so you're just constantly moving through things that are a once in a lifetime event for most people are a yearly occurrence for Arizonians. I think maybe that's your million dollar idea is start an Arizona, Arizona only like yard business. Uh, we've got so many of those. No, it has to be free. And Adam, you're not getting the, the, yeah, the Andy, thing is it has to be something that you can easily get. I don't want to burn any calories, but I want to make money mm. so we can offer enlightenment, which happens you know, whenever phone like psychics, here, have they done those or yeah. So here are the things that you can bilk people out of an infinity of forever therapy, because no one's interested in getting healthier. They're interested in your money. Well, enlightenment, because you're always whatever self-improvement, because what's the ceiling there mysticism, because you're an ocean of energy and chakras and fucking garbage. So mm. all of this stuff is technically free for you to peruse. But if we can package it in such a way that people go, I would love to pay two ninety nine for a small pamphlet of this guy on the cover going thumbs up, like <laughs> I I did it and so can you. Whatever it is, if it's crystal healing, I don't I don't care. I think maybe because, the answer is just become like an information broker. Like we don't have to come up with any new information. We just mm-hmm. promote other people's information. So like the Nintendo Power Hotline, but for everything. We're yeah. like the phone call Wikipedia for old people. Right. So now we're just a middleman for other people, though. I, I feel mean, like that's the most amount of money for the least amount of work. Yeah. I'll, I'll, an old person's going to call me and say, what's a yeet? And I'll just look it up on Urban Dictionary. <laughs> charge them $7 for the phone call. But but that's that's a... I don't know. That, that doesn't seem like... Because nobody... I, I'm talking about these endless cycles. Like, let's let's say... Whatever. So let's let's take self improvement for example, because where is your ceiling on self improvement? So a life coach can be a life coach to a single person for their entire lives, which if you're a smart and thinking person, you'd think you'd want to outgrow your therapist, your life coach, your guru, your swami, or whoever. But no one thinks to do that. So it's an unending cycle. What they the teachers should be doing is, yeah, break free of me and stop paying me. But Money is sweet to most people. (laughs) So you get stuck in that cycle. So if we can do something that will not ever need to really work, let's milk that cow, right? You're right. Life coaches for babies. I'm telling you that even though I'm telling you this is all a scam, if we do it, it will make money. I'm (laughs) telling L. Ron Hubbard did it. I'm telling you this is a scam. I will be selling free information that you can get free of charge for $2.99. Look, and I can I can also get my chakras aligned on YouTube anytime I want. Right, but there's a somebody out there who's going to be like, well, since it's free, it's worthless. But if they pay well, two ninety nine, that's what I was thinking. Is if you have two of the same exact service or packet of information or something, if one of them's free and one of them costs five dollars, the one that costs five dollars must be more credible or useful, right? Right. Right. So what if we did that too? That that could be our gimmick. We offer the same thing, the free course and the paid course, and it's the same fucking course. <laughs> So I'm I'm going to do a – this does not apply to physical product. My mother-in-law will buy anything. She's like, look, I got you guys that thing you always wanted, whatever it is. I got yeah. it at the dollar store for 250 and I was like, but the thing usually costs like $150. Mm. Let me, oh, good. Yeah, yeah it's Oh, it's, it's a cheap of, knockoff. Thank you, and you just throw it in the garbage. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like she, that- she, she's the kind of, kind of person who goes through the – like as you're standing at the aisle at the, C, at the CVS, the stuff that's in like the big – wire mm-hmm. bin she's like <gasps> yeah but the cvs and the dollar tree and the dollar general are literal physical embodiments of this idea like they're just handing you cheap garbage that you can get somewhere else that will last you longer and you can save yourself the hassle right mm-hmm. so if we say hey let's put a six-week thing together how to go from being this to having your control of your life right let's just say i want to stop saying no so we'll have a six-week course on how to stop saying no to the things you actually want to say yes to. It's free. I, I'm telling you right now. Here's the secret. Stop saying no and just start saying yes. But it will you take like some people. Movie, yes, man. Uh, it, less stupid and more real. But yes, you're right. It is exactly like that. All you have to do is just start saying yes instead of saying no. But it will take some people $2.99 and six weeks to learn that, whereas the other people will just look at it Read the words and be like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll start now. That's how I've learned guitar. <laughs> Bingo. If you put, but, but they're always like, hey, you want to pay me money for these uh, tabs? Like, nah, I don't think I do. Somebody right. somebody else somewhere has tab, tabbed this out. <laughs> right, because you're one of the people who knows how to game the system. 
the the smart way. You know, hey, my time and energy are exactly what I have access to, and maybe I don't have enough yeah, money. You're not the kind of person we're trying to exploit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But there I'm is sure you can exploit me try. <laughs> for every Andy, there is an exploitable Adam. Mm. Yeah, Adam's It'll, always paying money for something. No, I'm not, too. I'm not I'm just we have a dichotomy. So for every Andy that fills this role of the yang, we have an Adam that fills the yin who will be like, I will give you two dollars and ninety nine cents via PayPal. These tabs must be better. They got to, They're right? Not. That's why. Like, I bought I've bought books recently, like in this year, that I know everything inside of, despite having never opened them. Yeah. So you've never read them, but you know better than them? Uh, I don't know better than them. I know what's in them. I know uh. everything in them. Like when I read the talent code, my hypothesis for the talent code was it'll be exactly what I thought it was, which was just doing things slow having a good mentor who knows how to direct and having the ignition and the fire to stay lit. I did not need to spend $30 and read it over 300 pages. I just gave you the exact same information I took away free of charge. I'm, I'm going to, I, I forgot to describe the walls in the sadness room. Okay. The walls in the sadness room had pictures of, gra- of recent graduates and it said, will this be you? Oh no. No. It also had banners that said, congratulations graduates. Oh no. And then why, it had posters that were that were like, shame. It, it had posters that were like, oh, d- success is ninety percent effort and ten percent talent. But next to those were, okay. And also, guess what kind of degree the the guy who normally runs this place has? What what is he qualified to teach? Uh, maybe he's not qualified to teach anything. Um, I'm gonna say he's qualified to teach shop. PE. Uh, that's my second guess. But next to that would be posters with that guy's quotes underneath it would be like, you're here because you messed up. What? Oh. You, it, whether you do or don't graduate, it's all on you, fucker. That is <laughs> true, but when you phrase it in such a way, it is pretty daunting. What is the point of this room? Right. It's the sadness hole where I get to read <laughs> The Hobbit. It's a confusion chamber. Yeah, congratulations, <laughs> graduates. Oh, but P.S. is not you. There was yeah. one kid that got visited a couple times that day. By one of the teachers that was like, okay, you've raised your grade in this thing to 60%. I don't know how you're doing it. You're going to do it. You need one more class and you're at like 58. And I was like, that kid's going to do it. Good. All the other kids were like, thump. Ah. <laughs> right. But that you get to look at the amount of effort that they put in all year right now in a microcosm. Mm-hmm. Because uh, it was also, I, I feel bad for a lot of the kids because they had to do the distance schooling and nobody was watching them. Well, what the fuck? If you aren't in charge of your own future, who are you feeling bad for? The dickhead who didn't want to learn and therefore was left behind? They're 17. Yeah. Give, them a, oh, give them a break. Oh, no. I mean, so when do you think they should pull their heads out of their asses and take accountability for their lives? 27. That's <laughs> where it's hard. You just was, give them another 10 years? When I was 17, I already had a job. I mean, and most like, people that become, like, college-aged aren't ready for that sort of, like, self-discipline. Like, right, but school, school does not teach you how to be a human. So who do you expect them to, like, learn that from? Like, you go to school to learn math, you learn how to read, you learn how to write a nice mm-hmm. sentence, you learn how to use a computer. <laughs> then you go home, and if your parents aren't teaching you how to be a human, well, what the fuck? I, I, it's always annoying to me, like, now that you're going to be feeling it, and Cherish has usually felt it in the past, and I'm sure still does... But people who come up and, like, blame the teacher for how shitty their child, their child, is. Well, yeah, you're Fucking teaching them how to be a human at home, bitch. Like, that's where the important part is. I can also teach you math if I wanted to. I just farm that out because it's free through the government. <laughs> Very wise. Oh, I'm just saying you shouldn't, like, Andy, you shouldn't be on the hook or or whatever for anybody's... Oh, David, I constantly tell the kids in the classes I substitute, if they're jerking around... I was like, okay, so if you don't get your assignments done, it still gets graded anyway, and I will get paid for this. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's the perfect attitude to have, because even if you were, like, their regs ass teacher, you can only ask them to do their work. You can't force them. Like, this isn't communist China, and there's not going to be a bamboo cage and a cattle prod involved. Also, I-, I never had this delusion where teachers weren't getting paid, but every time I tell... <laughs> kids in like fifth grade and younger like i get paid either way they're like they're paying you like no i'm here for my fucking health well just but what i love to do it i, I do love to do it but sometimes <laughs> right. but there's an ignorance there simply because they're not um, they don't understand money like they don't understand a job like when i was in fifth grade i knew my teacher was my teacher but since i didn't have a job i just knew that i got allowance 
Well, they're it, almost another parental figure at that point. Right. That's what. That's basically it too. Is like you Isn't look to it them. Always as weird a, to see your teacher outside of class. So strange. <sighs> that's another thing that school puts you behind the eight ball. Is like you look to your teacher as a non-human, as another <laughs> other, separate from real life and home life. We're fractalizing reality in such ways. Yeah, I, it was so weird. You run into, I'd be like, oh, Miss Brown. And she'd be like, hi. And you just book it. Right? <laughs> and she's holding like a six pack of Smirnoff ice and wearing not a button up shirt. Uh, no, she was a respectable woman. But still, it was weird seeing her out in public getting fruit and stuff for, you know. <laughs> no, it, it would, but still, no matter who you are, no matter where you go, when you meet someone from one of your other world bubbles, it's just like, fucks with I, your head I, I always hated running into co-workers like out and about like Oof, uh yeah. hi yeah. i have i don't really want anything to do with you while we're working yeah or if you do that if you're not there yet and you decide like hey having a party where i invite people from work to my house seems like a good idea and then you realize oh yeah i'm around these people because i am paid to not because I hate, I hate this i want to well i don't necessarily hate it. i always find it interesting but it <laughs> it makes it a sharp relief because when you're there on the clock and you're basically forced yeah. to sit and be still and behave is a completely <laughs> different person once they get out to the RTO Sullivans and they've got a few of those aluminum bud lights in them and uh yeah i mean a, a work friend is fine but Outside of work, there's just not much incentive there. It, well, I've, I've made friends at work, but you have to, you can't be the person who at work just talks about and complains about work. The mm. friends I make at work, I talk about everything but work. When I say work friend, I'm not saying they can't make that jump to real friend, but no, I'm saying, a yeah. strictly work friend, there's not really a lot of ground to relate on. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, if, if your only connection is the place you're both... right. For eight hours simply because it'll pay your bills. Eh, what kind of friendship? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, you know, I know your friends in your class are your friends, but you're forced into their proximity every day. When they say, okay, you can go home, bye, the ones who will want to come over to your house, those are your friends. That's how you know. Yeah. They only wanted to come over because you owned an Xbox. I was uh, I was sometimes that kid. Like I I had a I had a um, a safety quote unquote friend uh, in the same cul de sac that I lived who had a Super Nintendo. So yeah, I'd put up with his dumb shit to play Super Nintendo, but it was a convenience thing. But here's here's he the knew thing. that he knew the arrangement. Yeah, <laughs> did, did he, he just the have the Super Nintendo and Super Mario World, or was he, his parents rich and he had like all the new games? Uh, he was like above me, but below that top tier. Mm. So he had the Super Nintendo and had like eight or ten games, and every once in a while I'd get a new one. But he wasn't like cutting edge. There was the one kid I knew in elementary school who had a Sega, and that was pretty cool. Yeah, was I had a friend who had a Sega. Oh it wasn't boy, you. I had to live my entire video game childhood through other people, which is like trying to live in a house through a window. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, had, like, I had Sega Channel. Wow. Oh yeah, you you were the the guy I would definitely have uh, glommed onto like a lamprey. <laughs> Sega Channel, the thing that when it worked was awesome, but like two of, out what? of every seven days of the week would just be like, I don't know, man, <laughs> I'm not feeling it. That Sega's <laughs> not feeling it today, bro. <laughs> Don't you have anything else you can play? I know your Sega came with like Jurassic Park. Can't you play that? Sonic needs a break, kids. But uh, yeah, th those kids were the ones I coveted. You know, because they got to experience the things that everyone was talking about. I I had to make do with like living outdoors and riding bikes and shit, while everybody was like figuring <laughs> out glitches and stuff on video games like Mario and whatever, and like doing speed runs. I was out on a bike. I was at a park behind my house. Ugh. Yeah. Outside, you probably have skin cancer. <laughs> we were using like dumb shit walkie talkies to talk to each other across like a church parking lot, being like, "Where are you? I'm by the trellis." And and everybody else is getting to play X Men and shit and like using Sonic. those Nerf guns that look like animals. Yeah, you know, you're one of those unfortunate children. I was one of these broke dick kids who like didn't have a video game system literally until the PlayStation. I had a Nintendo, then it was a long dry period, and then I had a PlayStation. Uh, see, I had I had original Nintendo, and then I didn't get another one until sixty four. I only suck. ever yeah, had so you're, you're like me. <laughs> yeah, yeah we had to time. go outside and like ride bikes and shit 
And oh, I, it, and, but then I still did that, but when I was done, I could hang out with my best friend Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you and a bunch of other people had that idea, and a lot of people got weird sexual ideas. <laughs> I never Andy developed took a fetish an ramp somewhere yeah. along the way. I never developed a fetish for a bike or a park, uh, <laughs> but that's just me. Some people might. I remember walking to the desert and poking at some cow bones. Uh, yeah. I remember you riding a, a fucking mini bike into a barbed wire fence. Yeah, I got a scar on my thumb. Nice. Yeah, and where was Sonic when that happened? Yeah, oh. nobody. I don't know. Where was, where was Sonic when that happened? Safely indoors, not getting <laughs> stabbed by a barbed where wire were fence. Your rings. Yeah, but and and that's the thing too. When <laughs> when you get to go to school the next day and they get to like that was the thing. You could always trump like any sort of video game with like a horrific disfiguring uh, injury <laughs> or like even if it was like. Nothing. I when I broke the the three bones in my foot when I it was fifth grade when it happened, and that wrote me a lot of checks. I like getting out of having to talk about video games and shit that I had no access to. They'd be like, "Oh, does it still hurt?" And I'd be like, "Nah, it's pretty chill." Or like, you know, I would I would try and impress the girls by walking on it way too early, which <laughs> turned out was totally fine. I well, I say fine. I have a huge bone bump. The size I have, of I have a club foot now. So yeah, I mean, there's a golf bone ball of spur. bone on the top of my foot. <laughs> yeah. So maybe I should have waited. But you know, you uh, that's know. life. I said, Thank "Fuck you, it." Louis Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I started playing the trumpet. That's why I took up the trumpet when I broke my leg because I couldn't play soccer anymore. I was going to be the yeah. David Beckham of soccer, but I ended up being the Louis Armstrong of soccer. <laughs> you said I couldn't became soccer, so I became Satchmo. <laughs> yeah, I had that stubby finger disease that Lisa Simpson had. Mm. I think that's called being a child. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you guys both reflected deeply. On that. <laughs> that was stereo reflection. Wow, didn't mean to get that ASMR deeper. Reflection. Mm. Yes. Yeah, ASMR where we just don't talk. <laughs> Stare at you. Stubby fingers. <laughs> Oh God! Listen to these stubby fingers. Crinkle so, paper. So, uh, let's. I, I feel like this might be a gold miner. It might be diarrhea. But uh, talking with PJ recently, I decided maybe we should start asking these questions of each other. So, Adam and Andy, what I want you to do is give me your top five movies. I don't necessarily need them in any order, but here are the prerequisites: your top five movies that you are going to put in a five DVD disc changer on a big screen TV somewhere in your house and they just play on a loop or random or whatever. So you can always go in and catch them on the fly. Give me five that you will live with in that changer. Uh, Goodfellas, Ghostbusters, Mystery Science Theater 3000, the movie. Okay. This is fast. I'm actually impressed. (laughs) Die Hard 3. Mm. Hmm. And then I want something dumb. So let's go with... Uh, super Troopers above Beer Fest. So Super Troopers. Oh, my God. I was... Andy, we are simpatico there. Adam, what do you got for me? I think I have two monster movies right off the top of my head. Okay. I'm going to do The Thing and Tremors 1. All right. Okay. Okay, okay. yeah. You have three left. Uh, that's that's a really tough one. Uh, my Mother the Car. <laughs> it's one Give me some could, years. It's ones you can always, always, always go back to and watch no matter yeah. what. That's why they're on a loop. Give, yeah, give me some give, years while I think of some more. Oh, uh, so mine, one of them is the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Uh, Super Troopers is on there. Dread is probably on that list. Mm, Dread's really good. Um, what else? Probably Basketball. Probably. Oh, yes. Uh, it Because I'm going to lean more toward my roots, which is comedy. And then I've got my last one is always a weird toss up, but I think I'm going with hard to kill the Steven Seagal rock <laughs> ripoff. Hard to kill. Those are my five. I'm going to do I'm going to add Beetlejuice on there. Oh, nice pick. Mm. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I might do might do Ghostbusters 2 because then I can go over to Andy's house and watch Ghostbusters 1. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the system. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> Walking walk down that? his house, I see Vigo, and I'm like, ooh. Yeah. You get a boner? <laughs> yeah, I get a boner. <laughs> Vigo, ooh. ooh. Unbutton the top button on my shirt. All right, shirt. so was that five or four? That was That's four, four for me. All right, give me your um, last one. I feel like I have some comedy on there. I think I need something 
serious. The thing is very serious. The thing is pretty serious. Your only well, comedy really is uh, Tremors, and that's also a deadly serious Beetlejuice murder. is comedy. Uh, this is Ghostbusters 2. Yeah, Ghostbusters. It, oh, yeah. I forgot about Ghostbusters 2. Yeah. yeah but, and also, Beetlejuice is a pretty dark comedy, so it's not like you're laughing belly laughs. You're laughing that's at fair. the sardonic dark side of life. I, I, I still think I need some sort of drama in there. Batman, Batman I, Returns. I think I'm going to put in... The original Batman wouldn't be a bad pick. I don't... Like the Burton I don't maybe one? you guys haven't seen this one. Maybe you won't agree with me. Uh, we Were Soldiers is a really good movie. Never seen it. I have not seen it. Uh, so you can say whatever you like about it, and it'll be the best movie Fantastic. ever. Fantastic. Krista, what do you got? Oh, God. Why did oh, you no. <laughs> say them and then not me? I didn't think you were going to choose me, too. Everybody. Didn't see this coming. Fuck. I mean... It... Definitely Dread. But I like Judge Dread and I like Dread. But the, keep in mind, the prerequisite is... I know, that I can watch it all the time. All the time. So I, David, I, you're going to pick always go over. back to. I, I could always watch Ninja Turtles 2. The second one? Yeah, or I just... I love as the, well. It, it's goofy. <sighs> yeah, that's what sucks like about Like Michelangelo it. jumping up and down behind a hot dog stand going, You want a pickle? I'll give you a pickle. I Yeah, okay, yeah. It is delightful in some aspects. <laughs> but... I'm a purist in every sense of the word. I think you know that. And I, I do like number two. I have to say Toka, Razor, Super Shredder, all give me little kid uh, fantasy boners. However, it's not going to make top five. Mm, I'm going to change my Ghostbusters. Two. what? I was just tag- that was just tagging onto Andy's a little bit. Okay. It's a good movie. Maybe top ten still. Uh, I'm going to throw in Grand Budapest Hotel. Really? I, I love that movie a lot. I would not picture you as a... Paul W.S. Anderson. Well, I don't know why I'm saying that, because, yeah, I could. You basically are <laughs> fucking a Paul W.S. Anderson character. So, yeah, I see that. Krista, have you had enough time? We've been blowing enough smoke over here? Or I mean, what? I, don't, I don't know if I have five yet, but so Scott you got Pil- two dreads. You got Judge Dredd and Dredd. <laughs> well, no, if you're going to do Dredd, I don't need Dredd. I could do Judge Dredd. Okay. I like Stallone. Again, in exploiting yeah. the system is That's not fine. the spirit of the game. <laughs> but it's what we're doing. Dredd is going to be played in the other wing of the house. Yeah. Right. Uh, Scott the Dread Pilgrim. Wing and the Judge Wing. <laughs> Scott Pilgrim versus the World. Okay, not bad. Escape Plan. I love that movie. Can I make one that you are probably going to overlook, but then you're going to be like, oh yeah, Most definitely. maybe Pan's Labyrinth. Mm, that mm. is a good one. That is a good one. Because you always want. I to... always mention it, and I, I yeah. haven't seen it since I saw it the first time in the theater. But I would totally watch it multiple times. I don't know Just... if I could watch that movie more than once in a day. There are movies that I uh, that I love. That I don't want to watch again, like Grave of the Fireflies. <laughs> yeah, there are some, yeah. like, a lot of, or almost all of Tarantino movies to me are good once, and that's it. Like, the Coen Brothers, same thing. Once, and that's it. Like, The Ballad of Buster Scuggs, awesome movie. I loved every second of it. I did love it. that movie. Do not want to watch it again. I could watch Lady Killers a lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not saying, like, you know, everybody, because there are people out there who watch Tarantino and devour it like it's fucking an endless supply of soft serve. Great. Mm-hmm. For me, I like watching it once. I get it. I don't need to watch it again. Poor M and M's all over this bad boy. <laughs> and I, I think I'll I'll put a walk to remember as my last one, only because I used to watch it every fucking day when I came home from school when I was in school. Yeah, I mean you can have comfort food on there. There's yeah. no reason not to five. put something. Like, I don't know. Turtles is not only the perfect movie; it's also a comfort food for yours truly. Mm-hmm. So it's a double dip. Mm-hmm. And I always keep a copy of it right here. I'm gonna hold it up to oh the my camera. God. It's, so a, you guys, it's there. It's in his hands. Ho- I How could it be it the perfect movie if it doesn't have David heart. Warner in it, which Ninja Turtles 2 does? Uh, because it has uh, Casey Jones in it, which number one does. But who's that actor? Like, the only other thing I remember him from is from Fallen. He's the crazy serial killer? He, yes, he's he's in a bunch of stuff. And he's a brilliant character actor. And that's why he works so well as Casey Jones. Because he's not a known dude that you can be like, oh, man, it's the, like, I don't care who... Brad Pitt portrays. He's Brad Pitt, right? Yeah. Yeah. Leo DiCaprio, same thing. He may do an excellent job portraying somebody, but that is Leonardo DiCaprio. There's no fourth wall breaking, right? Mm-hmm. Or there's too much fourth wall breaking. With your character actors, like your Arnold Stangs, your Bob whoever Hoskins. the guy who played mm-hmm. Casey Jones is. I bet I could look on the back of this thing. And, oh, man. Yeah, like he's listed. Judith Hogue is uh, what's her face? Elias Cotillas. I feel like El- Stanley Tucci is another chameleon type person. Yeah, the people who are there to be the role, not be a celebrity. What about Gary Oldman? That's why this is the perfect fucking movie, bitches. You can't like it's Zen. It's perfectly structured. It's everything you can it's, fight. And it does have like a, a soul searching portion at the at the cabin. 
Yeah, it's got. Ev- I'm telling you, Andy, it's got everything. Yeah, I just broke it down. Oh yeah. With Scott Vaughn, and now it's probably your guys' turn to do it next, so we can go over it because it was I was leading him through. It was like a a sighted man leading the blind man who just got his first eyeball. You don't have to convince me, David. It, it, it was like it was hovering right there. Like when you said Ninja Turtles, I was like, ah, shit. It it's like always the first one because it's the perfect movie. I can't stress. But, people say Jaws is a perfect movie. People say Back to the Future is a perfect movie. You may be right. Structurally perfect. Ninja Turtles needs to be put on that list. See, and when I was a kid, I always watched. So back when I was a kid, Back to Future Two, better movie mm. because there's more stuff going on. Ninja Turtles Two, better movie because there's more action, but less action because they don't use weapons and all the violence is cartoony violence <laughs> i wanted the i wanted leonardo to chop a guy's fucking head off mm-hmm. no i didn't want that but i wanted a mix of reality that made because the number one the reality of the situation is the reality of new york city like april is acting organically the fact that everybody in new york is totally fine with a giant turtle in a trench coat is legitimate <laughs> like Therapy, you do whatever you want in New York. No one will pay you any mind. Walk around with your sack out. Walk around as a turtle in a trench coat. No one will care. New Yorkers are so dead. And that's what's beautiful about it. Does your movie have a funky synth opening with shots of people eating the most delicious pizza you've ever seen? Yeah. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, Andy. I'm never going to say that Ninja Turtles 2 is a bad movie. It is simply lesser than. We can forget the third one, although there are parts. The third one is like, uh, how do you describe the third one in a way that will feel viscerally satisfying? Cash grab. Paint me a word picture. So not even a cash grab because it was like a no budget production that made no money, but they got Casey back. They did, except he's playing some sort of British guy. Uh, he wasn't playing a British guy, but they, they took all the... The, the darkness out of him. They took the grit out of him. They poofed his hair up and they made him a happy go lucky. Well, <laughs> oh, no, he's, he's also the British guy that April's hitting on. Uh, in the like flashback. The guy. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Like, uh, I, I, I know the other part where it's where it's like all the, we needed interstitials to, to stop it. Like, Oh no, we're burning another Japanese village and a child is in danger. Flash over to all the funny Japanese guys loving hockey. Yeah, and that that was the crazy thing about it. The way that thing, very inconsistent. And this is how I'll set the tone of the movie. You don't need to watch it. Just understand this. So the turtles find a magic lantern that will take them back in time, but it has to swap their body mass with somebody of close, you know, proximity. So... The only person, person, the only turtle to think of the person he is swapping with is Michelangelo. He puts on a pair of white boxers that have red hearts all over them. And he says, hey, man, Samurai's junk's going to be hanging out. So I'm going to wear these. And nobody, none of the other three turtles are like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Luckily, though, the movie says magic, magic, magic. The three dudes who are supposed to show up nude show up in a. Uh, like basically a samurai undergarment and the dude who is in the underwear gets no samurai garment. So somehow this time traveling universal electronic doohickey was like, "Uh Oh, can't show these dudes dick. This guy's covered. So I'll leave his underwear back in samurai times. He's covered. Yeah. And that's the movie in a nutshell. (laughs) That's it. I don't remember this movie at all. You know, it's not terrible. I would watch it again. Just, but it's not terrible. Because it's Ninja Turtles. It's, it's still the same personalities. It's just the dancing lesser than the other two. is fun. Let's be real. The dancing in the beginning is fun. The little choreographed thing and at the end is fun. Uh, the fact that they brought April number two back for three was fine. I would have liked Hogue, but at least we were keeping continuity. Seeing Casey was fun. Like, going back to Feudal Japan and having everybody be like, oh, giant turtles, like that sort of thing. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> <laughs> I that's a real life reenactment. That's not like a aha. Uh-huh, like, like, like so, <laughs> there are some times where where in that movie where stuff is dubbed over. I think hmm. like you, strange... you can hear voices that obviously aren't coming out of people's mouths that sound exactly like that. Like oh oh, hmm. oh Jesus! I'm reaching behind. So he's yeah, got, I, here's my copy of here. number three. What? Yeah, you just have it, all I the turtle movies it. close at hand. Yeah, they're always right behind me. 
And the, the, the sad thing about the number three, the most heartbreaking, rather, is they changed the splinter puppet. They made him much fluffier, much furrier, and much more like a uh, hamster than a rat. <laughs> and the costumes. My heart is broken. Yeah. We but still, it. It, two and three, solid follow-up to each, as long as you remember that every time a sequel happens, you have to drop two numbers off of the original. So since number one was a 10, that means number two gets to be an eight and number three gets to sit at a six, even though it huh. should be a two. <laughs> See, which is weird because I said Die Hard 3 is the best one because I fucking love the, uh, the dynamic that they have between uh, yeah, Bruce Willis and Samuel L. Jackson. There are a million permutations. Case in point, T2, far superior to T1. But the, you, if you have a T1 that's an 80 and you really throw yourself into the two, you can take it to 100. Hmm. Oh, just here, here you go, David. Here's cruise a question control happen. Sure, because this is a preference thing: alien yeah. or aliens. Z. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> They're different genres, in my opinion. Yeah, they are, and I, I like the the action of aliens simply because I was a pussy as a child, and alien <laughs> was scary as fuck. Yes, it was. And it's much uh, the the. The sting of horror is soothed by the salve of comedy. Which was provided by Bill Paxton crying. Bill, Bill Paxton <laughs> by like Sigourney Weaver being like, no one ever fucked anybody for a percentage if you're in the animal kingdom or whatever. I'm obviously butchering the lines. But like the bug hunt and the whole like yeah. the badass dude and his uh, Latina friend who like the badass parts of the Marines with the big guns. Love it all. And mm-hmm. it's got enough scary shit that it's still kind of a horror movie. Yeah. I mean, Aliens 2 is a solid movie. It's, just, it's Aliens. just Aliens. Like the, Aliens the 2. One. It's the fourth one. <laughs> <laughs> Alien Resurrection. Aliens, yeah. Yeah, it's Alien, the third one. Yeah, Alien, Aliens 2, Aliens 3, and then Aliens 2. Squared. Aliens 2, T-O-O. Yeah, Aliens also. <laughs> <laughs> aliens we are also 2 alien. also. <laughs> Yeah, why not go crazy? Just, like, do what Aqua Teen Hunger Force and just fuck over your audience base by changing your name every time you bring it back. You know, Aqua something, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or or you can do the uh, equally risky maneuver of the uh, Rick and Morty uh, scheme and just have five years in between each season. Right. Yeah, right. So I am completely now checked out. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah. Uh, but... I wonder why that is, though. Like, not to digress too much, but why were there so many years between seasons of Rick and Morty when... Because, like, it, it can only hurt you. Because if you're going to spread them out year... Between one and five years between each season, the merchandising is going to kill all the goodwill that everybody has in between season one in 1990 and season two in 1999. David, they, they need to they need to take a break. That long of a break so all of the people who idolize Rick can stop being such fucking spurgs between each season. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Like, if you're going to, if you make something that is so powerful, like artistically, that it makes people change their behavior, then don't even do it in the first place. Like, don't be like, oh, it's for your own good. It's for your power. own good not to enjoy this that much. I have cried on Rick and friend Rick and Morty. Yeah, they have some very emotional stuff sometimes. God, yeah, they, I they're can't. <laughs> uh, Dan Harmon, despite his faults, and Justin Roiland make a great storytelling team. They have got it down to a science, and the fact that they do makes everybody suffer because we have to. When you have a uh, groundbreaking, you know, emotional and also metaphysical experience that is Rick and Morty. Of course, a bunch of fucking Spurg Lords are going to be like, oh, man, it's a pickle Rick. But the rest of us who are whole human beings have to wait to be entertained by the thing we like because you are saying, well, the people who aren't actually getting this as we should, wink, wink, are making us pump the brakes for a few years. Fuck that. That's why I'm checked out. So help me out here. I've never heard the word Spurg. Me uh, did I did I say a bad thing? No, I mean, it, it, whatever. Did you make something up? Spurg is like slang for Aspergers, but short. Oh, 
Oh yeah, that's a bad thing. We're okay. sorry, everybody. Sorry. Whatever. I here's the thing: if you are going to get offended at what I am saying, get offended at what I'm saying. Don't <laughs> get offended by the words that I happen to use. Hate the message. Don't hate the word. Because as soon as somebody finds offense in a word and gets it stricken from common parlance, guess what happens? Every word that we use for stupid was at one time a medical term. Stupid, idiot, moron. All of these things were in medical literature and the public got them and corrupted them. So we had to move on. Mm -hmm. So I am no, I'm no longer making apologies for the context of my whatever. If you want to get caught up in the language, cry yourself a river, but whatever. I didn't, Bleh. Get Bleh. offended if you want. <laughs> Bleh. Bleh. That's it. It's my life philosophy. You want to get? Oh, he said a word. There was a noise that traveled through the air through my headphones and then hit my eardrums that offended me. Bye. Sorry to lose you. Uh, guys, why don't we start wrapping it up after I got on my soapbox? I will now take a step back. Let's do some staff recommendations. Andy, what do you want to recommend to our audience? Uh, if you've ever played like the original Bomberman games, it's like the top down. Those are fun. I remember uh, Bomberman. Well, there's 64. a free one that's a 64 player online thing. Mm. It's pretty called crazy. Super Bomberman R Online, and it's free on all platforms. I there was not not to steal your thunder, but when I was playing Bomberman 64 with Sean, and maybe you probably got the same visceral feel, getting the bombs to their biggest they could be, and seeing the actual like explosion. Um, mm. What you, not a cylinder, but oh, a my sphere. Poor David, this is different. This is a different bomber, man. But no, I know. But like, I'm, I'm just talking about the visceral feel of like having that, seeing the actual explosion go woo, and everything it really in nice. it just click and be, die. Yep. Oh, what a, well, what and, a and, and, man, cathartic you, experience. <laughs> bar, Barman 64 to go off on a little tangent had so many unlockable costumes, and some of them were impossible. Yeah, and and like you'd have, to, you'd have to like you'd have to bomb jump a specific number of things over to this thing and grab the stuff, and then you have to time this thing. And I'm like, ah, fuck me. And you had to go through its like campaign mode. Yeah, but Nintendo knew and still knows that there are crazy assholes out there who want to search a video game for the secrets of life instead of finding them outside, and they put little tidbits and stuff in there that people go 30, 40 years without finding. Yeah, so it's uh, Super Bomberman R Online. Uh, it's it's the it's the old Super Nintendo style Bomberman, except that every once in a while it's like fucking run and you have to run to another room where other people might be and then there's twelve people in a room and then I blow myself up. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's a skill, Andy. You'll get it. You got an achievement for it. You blew yourself up again. Here's a trophy, numb nuts. Now knock it off. <laughs> this is more of a shame thing. Uh, Adam, what would you like to recommend our audience? Oh, I'm trying to. I, I think I did Resident Evil Eight last time, didn't I? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. And I feel like have we ever recommended Hades on this? Yes. Shit. Uh, yeah, that Hades has gotten a lot of recommendations. I think okay. PJ's brought yeah, it up I'm several sure times. Yeah, is. everybody's uh, in love with that game. No new books or movies or whatever. I've been playing. All right, I just got Pokemon Snap a while back. Oh yeah, I saw the huge news when that broke. Oh, People it's like were, a new one. Yeah, for yeah. the Switch. That, that's what it's called. Is new Pokemon Snap. Oh. Nintendo name. said, what do you want? And Nintendo's fan base said, same thing we always do. And Nintendo said, hey, good news. That's our entire strategy. And they did it once before, but I guess that kind of applies. Uh, I think it's cute. I think the idea of Pokemon Snap is probably the only viable and justifiable way to have Pokemon. Because you're, you're taking the little snapshots and you get to marvel at all your pictures and stuff and you're not through the rigmarole of having to walk into the umpteenth dude in the umpteenth <laughs> foot of real estate in the town named after a color you're in to prove whose balls are biggest when he brought one level three pokemon to the battle <laughs> and you've got a level 20 oh it's fun like the you go on the same tracks like there's a lot more than there was in the last game oh for and sure do, like, yeah day and night mode but like the tracks change as you like as they get more comfortable with you being there uh, so there's a lot of like replayability and like things to yeah. discover. Yeah, oh, that's cool. It and with with a with leg room to spare because like on a 64 cartridge, what are you gonna do? But now right. you've got infinite room essentially to stretch your legs and just like because you can make procedurally like No Man's Sky taught us, you can make a procedurally generated whatever and yeah, just, just diddly daddle up. the Pokemon in them. The, diddle those Pokemon. The one yeah. thing that I 
don't care for about it, and I feel like it would probably be something you didn't care for either. What is the, the ammo so expensive? Well, the game has it has a scoring system for your pictures, uh-huh. but it doesn't take into account like what good photography would look like. Uh-huh. All it cares right. about is if it's centered and looking at you. And yeah, big. because you're it, so you're gonna have to. It's uh, it's another aspect of replayability because you right. need to get the quote unquote scientifically accurate Perfect photo, picture. right? And then you can go and 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 then you can do all the artsy stuff. Yeah, toot your own artistic horn, and then get them printed out, put them on your walls. I'm sure that's what <laughs> people do with them, right? Why else are you taking pictures? Somebody has to have done that, right? Somebody in the USA, maybe more than one has framed photographs from Pokemon Snap hanging on their walls. I'm sure. Wouldn't surprise me, I guess. I might be one of them if you can get me a <laughs> screenshot. <laughs> we'll talk after the show. Uh, so, yeah, Pokemon Snap, awesome recommendation. Krista, do you want to recommend anything? Um, I recommend if you have any local wineries around you that does wine tasting, do it. No, we we did one um, last weekend in Tubestone, and it was super fun. And, like, you support, you know, local people. We bought two bottles of wine to bring home, and it supported this old couple that has a winery. Yeah, if you can find a local business that's owned by old people, take that ride 10 times out of 10 mm-hmm. because they will want to tell you all of their life story, and sometimes it's even interesting to listen to, but they will walk <laughs> you through their life. And this guy... Night and day, guy and his wife. Guy, uh, here's the thing, the grapes, here's the... uh, Let's talk about me. Basically, he was me, but old. And then we went back and met his wife, and she was the complete opposite. She's like, okay, here's how you deal with the wine. You don't fuck around. I'm the one who made the wine, so don't (laughs) fuck around with the wine. If you stand this wine up... Don't stand it up. (laughs) Take it right home and put it in a fridge that is between 56 and 58 degrees. You know, like that kind of shit awesome experience and you know never would have done it because i've been like ew wine tasting blah and then i got slightly drunk <laughs> that's oh. the beauty of it it all worked out in every way possible i did that once in uh greece and it was a blast right ew, ew, sofa to greece it they was can in the military they can <laughs> ask you to spit it out but they can't make you <laughs> am i right all right i'll throw my recommendation behind that too because why not uh, I guess that's it. I'm not really plugging the um, like ways to contact us anymore because everybody knows how. Also, don't tell anybody. Uh, so yeah, that's it. It's a secret now. It's a secret. This is on my own secret stash because now it's exclusive. Uh, you know, not for nothing. I I would like to be disconnected and and like to let any weirdo come in that wants to come in and be a weirdo and hassle everybody in the audience. But also, I don't want that. So that's why I'm telling people not to tell people about the show. So everybody who has it can have it. And if somebody else finds it, okay. And if they're weird, but don't go around trying on my behalf. Because if you bring in the weirdos, then I have to hold it against you. And it's a whole big thing. Right. We don't Nepotism. pay for advertisement. We, we survive yeah. on anti-word of mouth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I want you to talk less about us if possible. Talk about <laughs> other shows. Uh, that. Full disclosure, not, not, whatever. Uh, obviously, we're not going to end right now, but I'm going to tell you a story. <laughs> I still, God damn it, I still to this day feel a little like when when people who like the show, fans, if you want to call them, my friends, when friends of the show tell me they listen to other podcasts, it still hurts me just a little bit. Oh. I realize it would be completely ridiculous to ask them to listen to one and only one show, <laughs> but still, don't. It's still like. Oh, do you like I I my, maybe it's because I want to ask them if they like them better than me. <laughs> I know if, my own maybe if we provided the same services as all the other podcasts. Yeah, I listen. I'm a very shallow person, and I need constant validation from outside sources. So, guys, until next week, I have been Dave. I'm Krista. I guess I have been Andy, but I could change. Do you like me now? I, I might would be nervous. To be Adam. <laughs> So, you know, uh, follow your own flute. I don't, what does that mean? I don't know. Pokey flute. It's a Pokemon Snap reference. See you next week. And we're out of time. Fistful of Podcasts Radio. Hey everybody, what was-
show. Joe, everybody, and Joe to the Joe. <clears throat> I wonder if there is Joe out there somewhere. Have a show. There is Joe, Joey, Joe, Joe. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, here we go. Hey, everybody, and welcome. Fuckity <laughs> 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 shit. Okay, now when I say here we go, I'm going to go again. Here we go. Again. <clears throat> Hey everybody and welcome to the show. My name is Dave and this is a Fistful of Podcast. Oh wait, I was going to do a different thing. Hold on. Mm. Time out. Here we go. Th- round you. three. Mm. That one was on me, guys. I I'm hope taking this all mullet. stays in. I think it's all been on you. Yeah. <sighs> the first one was definitely on Andy. All right, so here we go. <laughs> Excuse <Time> me. <clears throat> la, 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 la. It's working. See, now four is going to go to Andy now. Or three okay. is going to go to Andy. Here we go. 